everyone for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Dmitry, and uh, yeah, I've been a developer for this uh, 15 years. Um, pretty sad. Um, so yeah, today I will be talking about uh, image optimizations uh, on the web. Uh, so like, uh, why would you need to have uh, fast images, and uh, what you can do about that to make them fast, and uh, why it's important, and all that sort of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, working at this cool startup called PixBoost that I founded as well by myself. So uh, let's start. So yeah, so then we'll we'll go. Uh, I'll go quickly through like uh, four uh, four topics. So the first is why would you optimize images, and then uh, how you can measure, and uh, maybe like you already have fast images, so you don't need to really do anything about them. And then we'll show some techniques about how to optimize them, and uh, then the, lastly we'll talk about uh, what we can do about delivering them quickly. So. Um, I've uh, also created like a the demo website, so it uh, it it looks like this. So it uh, looks like the typical uh, online store uh, listing page that uh, selling coffee cups. So on that uh, on the on the demo website, you can find all the different like uh, types of optimizations, and uh, you can see how they how they actually speed up the loading and stuff. Um, the only thing that the uh, site is only accessible through dub, dub, dub. So don't try without dub, dub, dub. And the uh, sources are available on GitHub, so you can check them out and see uh, how exactly uh, the, those things are done. Um, so then the first question is, uh, why would you even bother to do anything with your images on, the, on your website? So like, I think that the first thing is, basically your business. So there are some big companies that uh, did some research and uh, they all agreed that like uh, speeding up your website will is actually have an impact on your conversion rate. The, the interesting thing about those is uh, Walmart and Amazon, they actually kind of concluded with the same exact number. So every 100 milliseconds uh, increased revenue by 1%, which is quite great. And uh, also I think like, like websites, they they were changing through the years, and currently, like, um, number of images that we have on our websites, it's quite quite large. And like, if you would, if you have a look on it, like a typical like online store, then probably like seventy percent of the traffic is uh, images. So like, having a fast images in those cases means like having a like a fast website and uh, having a good revenue in case you have uh, fast images. So then uh, the next thing that uh, I really want to focus on is uh, how you can measure uh, your images, like performance of your images on the website. And um, I also like want to focus the importance of like not like a one-time measurement, but like you, you really need to like do this regularly. So like you're doing some changes on the website, they can affect your performance. And like the important thing is to kind of have that visibility. So ideally, like after every change, you would run set of tests that should be like really like um, environment agnostic, and uh, you should get some reports. So then you can see how your how your website performing um, or your web app. So I'll I'll go through like some 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 tools that you can leverage to do that. So the first one is and probably the simplest way is just uh, Chrome developer tools. So uh, if, you have, if you have Chrome, then you have it. So I'll, I'll show you on this page. So all you need to do is press F12. Then we'll see the developer tools. Then, uh, so there are a couple of things that we have to mention. The first one is that uh, you want to make your tests like uh, be environment agnostic, as I said. So first thing that like coming to mind is that uh, uh, you have different internet on different days, and uh, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's not. So the first thing that you probably want to do is to limit the speed to have the same speed every time when you're doing your measurements. So using Chrome, you can easily do it through this uh, Dropbox, so you can throttle your uh, your speed. So Let's say we can do, we want to do 
fast 3G. The other thing, because you want to measure like how like fast your images are loading, you also want to disable the cache. So there is a, another checkbox for this, so you can tick it. So after that, we can uh, we can reload the page, and then uh, we will see. So the other thing is here; it's like an images tab, so you can see specifically images. And what's good about it is that down down here, down there, it will show you number of number of images that you loaded, like number of requests, and uh, also the size of the images that uh, were loaded on this website. So in this case, this is like a like original not optimized page. We can see that we loaded 25 images and uh, it was uh, about 800 kilobytes. So that's probably the easiest way. So then uh, we can go a bit further. So in the in the Chrome developer tools, there is a, another option. Uh, you can right click on uh, any request and do the and select the option copy copy all as HAR. Then you can paste it in any editor, and you will get uh, gigantic um, JSON. Uh, in that file, you will have all your HTTP requests that were coming through. So then, uh, using some uh, special tools, you can also uh, parse the JSON, uh, extract only images. Also, there is in the, J J the JSON um, has all the timings and stuff, and it's not just like one time how how um, how long it took the image to load, but uh, it's actually br broke down to like uh, like how for how long it was like waiting in the queue and like how long it was downloading, how long it was uh, doing a self handshake and all that cool stuff. Um, yeah, so I actually wrote an article about how to do that because you can also like integrate it with your CI, so you can run Chrome in a headless mode and like in the Docker, and then you can JSON, get JSON files and also like generate like a nice report, so you can see uh, your uh, performance of your of your images on the website through the time. Uh, and the last tool, that not least, that I want to talk about is the Google Lighthouse. It's um, relatively new tool that uh, Google came came up with. Uh, currently, it's again shipped with uh, Google Chrome, so you can easily access it from here. So uh, it's it's located in Audits tab. If you go to Audits tab, there is this Lighthouse. So then you can do click Perform an Audit, select all your checkboxes that you're interested in. So it's not only performance, but it's other metrics as well, like SEO and accessibility. So then you can click Run Audit, and uh, it will go through the page and uh, do some measurements. Um, Again, what is cool about Lighthouse is that it's not only like a plugin for Chrome, but uh, there is also CLI for Lighthouse, so you can uh, run it in the command line, and you can also integrate integrate it with all your uh, continuous integration tools and uh, other stuff. Um, so then uh, it generates a report, and then uh, again, like on this demo website, we can see that like first. Uh, in, in opportunities, so we can see surf images in next gen format can save us uh, more than a second. Then properly sized images can save us uh, another half a second. Off screen images can save us uh, 100 milliseconds. So like three of three or five are related to images, and like that's very typical for like for online stores from what I saw in my practice. Um, so. And uh, yeah, so it's about. So there are other tools that you can use to measure performance, and but those probably the easiest one that uh, you can start with. But uh, yeah, I, I guess probably there are many others. So now uh, let's uh, go to how to optimize. So once we identify the problem, so we want to solve it. So I'll. So the first optimization that I want to go through is uh, responsive images. So the idea is that uh, that's another like what that um, the thing is um, in the very first version of HTML we had the image tag and like kind of it's already exists for quite a few years um, and uh, I will guess for this years yeah we we almost have self driving cars cool robots and quadrocopters and other cool stuff but uh, the uh, problems with images is still here 
<laughs> but it's just, I think, that um, kind of the, um, the type of content is changing. It's just more images are coming. There are other things that, like, we, we are getting, like, we, we got, like, mobile devices. We got different screens. We got high DPI screens. So it's just uh, complexity of serving images uh, increased as well. So, so let's say we had that banner with the coffee beans on the top of the demo page. So how it's done originally is just like have an IMG tag. So then let's say when we are going to mobile view, right? Um, here, so we can switch to mobile view to look like that. So here on, on not optimized version, we are loading exactly the same image, which is kind of huge. It's like a 1,000 pixels. And uh, there is no point to load this image um, on the mobile device. So what uh, W3C came up with is a picture tag. So in a picture tag, you can specify different images for different, uh, for different screen sizes. You can also specify the different images for different uh, DPIs of your displays. We have those 4K displays now, we have a Retina displays on Apple devices. So then you can use a picture tag to, to, to render different images that will basically go into the size of the screen. So it, it, it will help because the image will be smaller. Um, uh, regarding the browser support, picture tag is currently supported by all major web browsers. If you need to go to IE10 and before, then you can use a polyfill that's called picture fill. It's, it's working perfect, perfectly, so it's very safe to use. Um, yeah, so that's one of the optimizations that you can use. Um, so the other one is uh, next generation formats. So that's a that's a very old image that I found on the internet. I also put like the the years that <laughs> those formats were created. So it's like well more than twenty years for each of it. And uh, again, like you would think, well, <laughs> we could do all the cool stuff. Couldn't we like uh, render images like in a bit uh, better way? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there are many, many different uh, formats that actually generate like a smaller image uh, with the same like a visual quality. I'll talk you through those three. So there is a JPEG 2K, which was created in two, Two thousand, yeah, two thousand, and uh, there is a JPEG XI and WebP. So, all of, any of those formats, uh, they firstly they support like uh, transparency, and uh, so you don't need to anymore juggle be between JPEG and PNGs. Uh, the other good thing about them, like like pretty much on the average, any of those formats will be like thirty percent smaller with the same visual quality. Uh, why I picked those three? Because uh, uh, those three companies and their respective browsers, which is Chrome, Safari, and uh, Internet Explorer, each of them are supporting one of those formats. So Chrome supports WebP, Safari supports JPEG 2K, and uh, Microsoft supports Internet Explorer supports JPEG XR. And uh, that's pretty sad. So all those three formats, they're all like open, there is a codex and stuff, so I guess it's fairly easy to integrate all of these formats into the browsers, but uh, I guess, I, I don't know why they're not doing it, to be honest. <laughs> um, and uh, so from, from, the, from that, um, um, because not all browsers supporting them, there is a complexity that's coming. So to implement those different formats, um, on your website, uh, you would need to, to have your images in four formats. In the original format for Firefox, then in WebP, JPEG 2K, and uh, JPEG XR. So there is no like very easy way to do that. So you would usually go to your web server and uh, have some tools that like once you upload the image, it will transform that image into all different formats. Then uh, for Chrome and uh, for Internet Explorer, you can rely on the headers because uh, there is accept header that uh, those two browsers will send and Safari is not sending, unfortunately, that header. So you would need to do something like on the client side to determine if it's Safari, then request that image. And um, yeah. 
So, um, so back to the demo. Um, I have a version of the same page that uh, using the next generation formats, and uh, in this case, it's also using the uh, responsive images, so it's like a right size of the images for all the like uh, coffee cup thumbnails and uh, for the top level banner. So if we load this one, so it's using WebP because it's uh, uh, is it the wrong one? Sorry, uh, disable cache. Yeah, I need to put the throttle here as well. Um, yeah, so, ah, sorry, wrong one. Mm, I need this one. Probably should give them all different titles, but yeah. Um, yeah, if you go to network and reload this page, then uh, yeah, we'll see that uh, now just using WebP format, as you can see it here, it's all WebP and also use the right sizes of the images. Uh, now it's just uh, 134 kilobytes, which is like eight times smaller. So, but just like using that uh, next generation <laughs> formats and have the right sizes, we can like uh, increase the performance. And uh, time-wise, we can see here it took us half a second to load to load all the images. And uh, I think in that first one, How long that was? It was uh, almost seven seconds. Uh, sorry? I, I didn't enable throttling. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, tried to cheat. It's good. People are paying attention. <laughs> um, still, two seconds. So, two seconds, so it's like three times faster. So if we put this onto that uh, first slide when we are saying every half uh, every hundred milliseconds give us one percent of revenue, we can see that uh, that's probably business can make some money. Ah, uh, on the other hand, it's still a uh, user experience, right? The most important thing, and the thing is, it's uh, it's kind of like it's. I think it's very big impact on user experience. You you probably don't really want to wait, and uh, that that can have a very big negative impact. Uh, on user experience. So let's go back. And um, so the next thing is the uh, lazy loading. So the idea is quite simple. So we are only loading the images that user can, that user sees now. All other images we are not loading until user scrolls to them. So when user scrolls, like just before the image get get into the viewport, like into the uh, browser window, then uh, we want to start loading it. So in that, uh, in that case, we, we just need to load those like uh, five or six images that we have on top, and we don't need to load all of the other images. Uh, Implementation-wise, um, for many years, people were using like on-scroll event in JavaScript, so you put like an on-scroll handle, and then like on every on-scroll, you need to get all your images, oh, sorry, all your images, then you need to recalculate all the like uh, visible like uh, areas of those images. If they're in viewport, then we want to render them. Otherwise, we don't want. Uh, W3C just like they came up with a cool standard called Intersection Observer, uh, which which was created just because of the lazy loading. So you can create the Intersection Observer with a handle. You can pass the uh, list of elements and then one handle once the the element will intersect with the area that you want. It will trigger the handle so you can load the image. Uh, again, uh, implement uh, browser support wise, uh, pretty much all the browsers supporting it except Safari. Safari is actively working on the implementation. It's almost done for desktop. They're just uh, trying to uh, fix it for mobile Safari. Um, so, there is a polyfill, but uh, I had some problems with that polyfill, uh, especially with absolute positioned elements and stuff. So still, like you can use that on scroll, on scroll method, but on scroll method is a bit like it's it's not very good performance wise because on every scroll event you will like run like quite a huge JavaScript to calculate all the positions of all the images. So what I would pref I prefer to do is basically do the 
user in the section observer for all the browsers that supports it and like do not use lazy loading for Safari. Um, again, we have a demo, where we have a lazy loading with all other optimizations enabled as well. Unfortunately, this one I wrote in React and because there is event like a bundle thingy, like it's uh, quite big, so it's not that fast as others. Uh, but we can see how how images are performing. So if we load this one, so as you can see, we just loaded like a top banner and like a couple of images, uh, like four or five images of cups. So we didn't load all of them. And uh, now we reduced our images size uh, by like to the 73 kilobytes, which is pretty much like 10% of what we had originally. Um, and uh, while when we are scrolling it, they uh, start loading. So as you can see, um, so that's uh, another technique that you can use to optimize your images. And uh, so then the last thing what, that I want to talk about is a content delivery network and how you can optimize the delivering of the images. So content delivery network is uh, many servers across the world, like in um, different geographical locations. Uh, the idea is if you have a customer from, let's say, states, then, you, then images will be served from states. If you have customers in Australia, then images will be served uh, from Australia, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, the other cool thing about CDN, it's usually extremely hard to set up your web server the same way as CDN set up. And there are like some, so usually like you have your web app or you have your website, then you have probably some web firewall on top of them, then you have some load balances, then you have your web server that you need to set up. So like it's uh, quite a few network hops that request uh, doing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, images are usually like a public, so you don't really need like a firewall to access your images. Uh, so then the CDN usually builds a way that it's like very like, a, like very first thing that it's hit, so I guess it's very hard to set up the, your web server the same way as CDN. Uh, the other cool thing that you'll get from CDN is uh, usually like uh, support of HTTP2. So because currently we are going the way that like all websites and everything should be HTTPS, HTTP2 is a very good standard that like uh, decreases the time for the cell handshake to like initiate the connection. And uh, usually all modern CDNs um, have the ability uh, to provide you with that protocol. They, like, almost all of them support. Um, so that's kind of pretty much it. Like, like I think what, what you would do to optimize your images. And uh, as you can see, there are some like a technical pitfalls and like uh, quite few things to do. Um, there are third party services that can give it for you so like that you can like just uh, give it an image and like give it different sizes it will render all the different on all the different sizes deliver it through CDN provide you like this laser loading and other cool stuff so it's uh, this yeah those, those things usually called image CDN so it's like CDN specific specifically for images that uh, you can use um, so and then it should be much easier than do everything that I talked about manually and that was pretty much it.